Hein? Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You are part of the 200 people worldwide who registered to this webcast, powered by Your Development, System Plus Consulting, and Nomade. This webcast is entitled First Milestone for GAN Power Devices. My name is David Jordan, and I'm Global Sales Support and Coordination Manager for Your Development. So before starting the webcast, let me give you some practical information. First, you have the possibility to submit questions during all the webcasts. Just use the Ask a Question window at the bottom of the screen. We will answer as many questions as we can at the end of the webcast, and for the remaining ones, we will follow up with you via email. Also, please note that the presentations are already available, and they can be downloaded from the Resources section of the platform. Finally, you will receive tomorrow an email with the link to the recorded uh, webcast session. So uh, let's start with Eski Dogmas, Technology and Market Analyst, Compound Semiconductors and Emerging Materials at Child Development. Eski, the floor is yours. Thank you for the nice introduction, David. So good morning or good evening, everybody. So welcome to our webcast on um, GAN uh, Power Market Technology and Patent Analysis. So it's a pleasure for me to, to co-animate this webcast with my colleagues from our sister companies, um, System Plus Consulting and Nomade. So let me first start with a brief introduction of Yale Development. I think many of you are already familiar with our company. So we are a market research and um, consulting company uh, specialized in three main uh, domains and um, from photonic sensing, semiconductor software and power and wireless in which we cover um, RF devices and technologies, compound semiconductor and emerging materials and then the power electronics and as well as the batteries and the energy management. And me, I'm part of the compound semiconductor activity, and I would like to show you in this slide the, the materials that we cover. So in our activity, we focus on both the established and the emerging compound semiconductor substrates that we see here. The established ones would be, um, uh, would include, as you know, the most major compound semiconductor gallium arsenide, then the narrow band indium phosphide and the wide band gaps, uh, silicon carbide and gallium nitride, which is grown on um, sub several substrates such as silicon, silicon carbide or sapphire. And we will also keep an eye and of course track the, the emerging semiconductor substrates such as the bulk GAN, the gallium oxide, diamonds, and engineered substrates on which we see a great interest um, from the industry over the last years. So we can really say that these Com uh, compound semiconductor materials are in the core of all the emerging devices that you see around, and they are deployed in numerous end applications from the consumer, mobile, to automotive, to and industrial uh, applications, as well as the defense and medical market segment. And at YOL, of course, each of these emerging end applicative markets related to photonics, sensors, um, LEDs, power, and RF are tracked and in our compound semiconductor activity, we bring a perspective on the markets and the technology trends and analyze the value chain at the substrate, epi wafer, and the device level. So amongst all these interesting applicative markets and also the compound semiconductors, today we will focus on the GAN-based power electronic market. So before jumping to GAN, uh, let's, let me give you some insights on the global power electronic market trends. So, over the last years, we have all seen a penetration of uh, new emerging applications, which are boosted, as you know, by several mega trends, such as the, the climate change or digitalization or mobility, but also some governmental subventions. So we have all witnessed the, the emergence of new segments, such as the electric vehicles, hybrid electric vehicles, also the charging infrastructures, some sensing functionalities such as LiDAR, the wireless charging for the phone, or some more efficient power supplies to be used in the data centers. So to meet the requirements of all these markets in terms of efficiency, cost competitiveness, and integration, the wide band gap materials such as silicon carbide and GAN have become a great interest. 
owing to their intrinsic properties. And over the last years, we have also seen a remarkable developments in, in reliability, manufacturing, and, and supply chain aspects. So now let's see where gallium nitride is positioned in the power electronic market, so where historically, as you would know, the silicon-based devices such as the IGBTs and the MOSFETs are dominating. So it's a need for smaller and higher efficiency and also lower cost systems, the white band gaps SIC and GAN have emerged over the time. So we can say that GAN is, has a really ideal spot for high frequency power applications, computing with the silicon MOSFETs from 50 to 650 volt range. And at higher power, we also see a competition with the silicon carbide. But we can say today that the GAN power market is dominating more on the low voltage electronics of, let's say, less than 900 volts where the total addressable market is very huge. But then you will ask me, so what is the status of um, GAM today? So um, we can see that in this slide, compared to silicon, the GAM development timeline is quite recent. So in early 2000s, we see the first commercial uh, GAN hems from the key fabulous players such as EPC, Transform, GAN Systems, Exagan, Navitas, and many others. And these fabulous players partner with well-established foundries such as TSMC, Epicil, and XPAF. And in parallel, um, many established discrete and power module manufacturers such as Panasonic, Infineon, Onsemi, but also well-known power management players such as Alpha and Omega, Semiconductor, Texas Instruments, Dialog, and very recently, last year, power integrations have entered the GAN business. So we can really say that almost of all of these key power electronic players are developing and getting ready in terms of their product portfolio as the market starts to grow. So what are the applicative market segments for GAN? So here we see some different market segments targeted by the GAN devices. So first of all, we will have the industrial markets such as the, the UPS data center or some photovoltaic inverters, but also the automotive, the EVHEV, which are, let's say, more conservative markets requiring long qualification cycles and high efficiency and also long-term reliability. And then we see the consumer market where the performance and the cost are driving. So the GAN devices uh, would need these two parameters for a nice adoption. And finally, we have the emerging markets such as LiDAR, wireless charging, or envelope tracking, where the GAN adoption is in, more in the second place. So the first, the adoption of these market segments are important to watch. So if we come back to to the GAN company timeline and superpose the commercial products, including GAN, we have such a picture. So we see that over the last years, the market adoption of GAN devices have accelerated mainly in the power supply market. So by 2018, the major power supply application of GAN is more in the data centers, where the benefit of uh, GAN is really the high power density and high efficiency. So it offers reduction in the overall system size, but also the cost. And the data centers, um, we see adoption of both 650 volt GAN for PFC from players such as Infineon, Transform, GAN systems, and also at lower voltage, 48 volt DC-DC converter solutions from players such as EPC, Texas Instruments, and GAN systems. Uh, on the other hand, since the beginning of this year, we see actually a great market traction for the GAN-based fast chargers. So we have seen more than, let's say, 50 fast charging brands deploying GAN devices, such as Anker, Rolf Power, or Bezos, and then many more. And in addition, in Q4 2019, mobile phone manufacturers such as Samsung or, and Xiaomi have also launched some GAN-based accessory fast chargers. So it's about 45 watts power rating, and here I call this type of chargers uh, after market fast chargers, so which would represent a secondary market opportunity in the smartphone industry. But this is not all. So in Q4 2019, there was also a launch of the, the inbox fast charger using GAN transistors from the Chinese smartphone maker Oppo. So it means that the GAN-based charger is sold with the smartphone itself, so it really opens the door for a high-volume market opportunity. So let's understand what is the fast charging. 
So as you know, over the last years with the arrival of new functionalities, such as the augmented reality, virtual reality, or high quality games, additional cameras, and, and of course the increasing screen size, the smartphone battery capacity had to be increased. However, a larger battery means also longer charging time, so which is a trouble from customer point of view. Thus, reducing the charging time has become a crucial parameter for the OEM. So, so we see each OEM, uh, they are developing their own high power and faster charging protocol, and they are keeping on developing the technology with higher speed. And at this point, the Chinese OEM, Oppo, has adopted GAN fast chargers, so which can enable 65 watts uh, in its new flagship model. And here, GAN transistors can enable really high power density, high efficiency, and also small size, which are the key parameters for compactness and also low weight. And here we have a record charging time of around 30 minutes. So the GAN device used in these chargers comes from power integration, system and package solutions where GAN on Sapphire Hemp is integrated with some silicon drivers, as it will be explained more in detail in the next presentation from Elena. So now let's ask the question. So what all these great news are, will bring to the GAN power market? So as of today, in our understanding, the technology choice depends on many factors. The technology choice, of course, for the converter used in the fast charger. So it can be the power rating, the, the cost, the desired form factor, and of course the OEM strategy. So while below 30 watts, many of the inbox fast chargers have silicon MOSFETs, above 30 watts, we see a great competition between the GAN and silicon in terms of cost, small form factor, and performance. So in our market estimation, in the nominal case, we expect more and more Challenger smartphone OEMs to adopt GAN. So what I mean with the, the Challengers OEMs would be the Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, Redmi. These are Chinese OEMs who really desire to get some market shares from the leading players, such as Apple, Samsung, or Huawei, in the luxury phone uh, smartphone segment. So one way to do so is really to differentiate their products by launching innovative and high performance solutions, So as is in the case in the fast charging. So Oppo's adoption is really a perfect example for this. And similarly, Xiaomi has also announced 66 watt fast chargers, and Vivo has also announced beyond 100 watt charging, where again is more likely to be deployed in terms of interesting price and performance ratio. So as a consequence, we expect the overall market to reach beyond $350 million by 2024. But let's not forget that the leading OEM Samsung has also adapted GAN-based devices in its accessory chargers for 45 watts. So we can understand that the OEM wants to really try out this new product and see its market acceptance through its customers. So this adoption can be considered as a really positive sign for the eventual adoption in the inbox charger. So in our best case scenario, which expects a market value beyond $750 million in 2024, we would consider the GAN adoption in the luxury flagship models from these three leading players, Samsung, Huawei, and Apple. So this will bring me to my final slide where we expect um, um, a great market dominance of consumer fast charging products over the next five years. Meanwhile, of course, several GAN companies such as EPC, Transform, have also achieved the automotive qualification and GAN systems is also on the way. And there's a tremendous effort for development of GAN in the 48 volt DC-DC and the EVHEV segment in collaboration with the tier one such as Valeo or Continental. So we can say that starting from 2023-24, we expect a takeoff in the automotive market, which will also then followed by the industrial segments, such as the data centers or the, the UPS. So these slides actually are extracted from um, our annually updated report, which is called PowerGAN. 
um, which is published recently. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you will find a wide report collection in our activity covering both the established and the emerging compound semiconductor substrates. But in, in addition, I would like to, to, to note that since uh, Q4 um, 2019, we offer a new product called Compound Semiconductor Monitor Service, including the quarterly updated market data on silicon carbide and gallium nitride, power devices, and also the wafer and the epi wafer markets. So this monitor is already available. And actually, following the entry of GAN devices in the high volume consumer fast chargers and the silicon devices in the EVHEV market, the market is rapidly changing. And we think that it needs to be analyzed quite frequently. So in this monitor, we also give a technological split of the market depending on the device technology, the substrate type or substrate size, as well as a detailed overview and market shares of the key players in, in both of these markets. And in the next quarters, we are adding gallium nitride and gallium arsenide in RF and gallium arsenide and indium phosphide for photonic markets in our quarterly updated monitor service. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Asgi, for this uh, exhaustive overview of uh, the GAN market. Now let's continue with Elena Borbarini, Head of Devices Department at System Plus Consulting. Elena, it's your turn. Thank you, David. So hello, everybody. My presentation will be more oriented on technology and cost overview of uh, the latest uh, GAN power devices uh, and has already at CD introduced um, some implementation of the device itself uh, on the latest commercial uh, devices. So just to have an overview, but actually it's already presented this slide, um, the, the market uh, of uh, GAN has uh, now 10, not really market, but development of GAN has now already 10 years, but actually in the latest three years, we saw a really booming uh, of uh, new players entering this market um, and finally, finally some uh, uh, commercial applications such as the, the fast chargers. So if we have a look uh, of the uh, commercially available uh, GAN devices, so actually all the devices we can uh, easily buy, um, we see that uh, uh, there are two main groups uh, of device according to, to the voltage application. So the, the, the low part, uh, the low voltages uh, market, uh, it's mainly um, taken by, by EPC, and there are some other places, players that propose their, their device. While in the, in the medium voltage market, so 600, between 600 and uh, 750, we have a lot of players that uh, propose their, uh, their device. So here we see that actually it's in this area that we have uh, uh, different options in terms of design of the device uh, and um, packaging, of, uh, for example, of, uh, of the devices. So in, the, in my presentation, I will focus on the uh, 600 and uh, up to 750 um, volts uh, uh, devices. So if we have a look uh, uh, to the supply chain, actually it's interesting for us to understand the cost uh, of, uh, of fabrication. Um, the device supply chain up to now, it's uh, uh, really, um, it's full of, uh, of players. Uh, while, uh, for, uh, for example, for silicon carbide, it's uh, quite linear. Uh, we have a few, few players able to, to do the epitaxy uh, and to do the fabs. For, uh, for GAN, uh, we have a lot of players that actually enter the market uh, even if they don't have the fab. So a lot of players that just propose the design of, the, uh, of their device, and then they use uh, uh, confirm the fabs to make the, um, the, the epitaxy of the device and, uh, uh, and actually the active, uh, the active device itself. So here you can see actually that uh, uh, the main fabs that they propose their um, services to do um, epitaxy and, and front-end, uh, TCMC, EPC, Lixfab, and, and Fujitsu. And then we have other players 
like Infineon, Panasonic, Texas Instruments, that actually they uh, use also their in, uh, internal fab. Uh, if we have, uh, why actually we are interested in, uh, in, uh, in GAN? Um, because actually GAN um, proposed and entered the market thanks to their uh, good performances and has main competitors in the range, of, always in the range of 600, uh, 650 volts, the main competitors of, uh, of Super Junction MOSFET. If we have a look about uh, um, to the performances, the figure of merit of, uh, of the latest devices proposed uh, on the market, uh, we see how um, the, the amelioration trends of uh, GAN devices is going uh, really fast. Uh, in the latest year, we have a lot of uh, um, new proposals for, uh, for GAN players. Um, I, anyway, I want to highlight that the research uh, and investment on superjunction MOSFET, uh, so silicon superjunction MOSFET, uh, is uh, continue and play you didn't stop their uh, design and their the, the offer of, uh, of new products. Because actually, in terms uh, of cost of device, silicon is still uh, uh, competitive. Uh, so that's why the, 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 the development uh, is uh, it's not finished. Um, but uh, uh, so we see that uh, GAN, it's, uh, it's really interesting, uh, but we need to, it needs to be uh, improved, especially in terms uh, of, uh, um, of cost. And actually the challenges uh, that we have in, uh, in a GAN device that uh, also imply a um, multitude of different solutions proposed by the different uh, manufacturers um, uh, can be listed in, in three axes. So the first challenge of uh, GAN device is the epitaxy itself. So we will see in, uh, actually in my presentation, I will focus on a Gannon silicon uh, device and Gannon sapphire device, but uh, uh, the epitaxy is the, it's the main point uh, of this device because actually of the latest mismatch uh, between uh, gallium nitride uh, and silicon and actually gallium nitride and all the substrate that we can, uh, we can have. Um, second problem is the uh, normally on factor. So the, the design of the transistor itself, GAN, so actually it's normally on, um, but players have to find a, a solution to solve this problem and to have a normally off device. There are two main designs which we can find on, uh, on the market. It's the cascode solution and the enhanced mode, enhanced mode design. So here in the slide, you have some player, for example, Transform proposed a cascode power integration. It's a cascode code design um, on Ghana Sapphire. And the other players like Infineon, uh, Hexagon, NPC, they propose the, uh, their enhanced mode solution. So the main difference is the design itself of the of the gate, uh, actually the two uh, dimensional electron uh, uh, part, um, and this can have an impact in the final packaging, uh, in the design itself, the design, but also in the in the packaging itself. And so the third point, uh, the third challenge of uh, of GAN devices is the packaging itself. There is not one standard packaging up to now. Uh, any player according to the design of their devices and also um, the integration itself in the final solution uh, propose different solution of packaging. So we can have a uh, um, monolithic uh, design. Um, we can have a single die uh, design, cascode, um, external drive, internal driver. So we will see these, uh, these differences. So if we start f with the first challenging, so the epitaxy. Um, so the main problem, as I see, is the, as I say, is the mismatch. Um, actually, GAN can, grow, can be grown on uh, silicon, sapphire, silicon carbide, and, ob and obviously uh, GAN. Uh, but why the, the product that we have found now in the market are on silicon and sapphire, mainly because of the cost. Um, of the epitaxy itself. If we have an epitaxy of GAN on GAN, uh, we have a less problem of uh, mismatch. Uh, but uh, uh, at this moment, 
the cost of the substrate uh, in GAN, it's uh, uh, too much uh, to be implemented by the by integrator and to be accepted uh, in uh, in a final cost of a device. So what's interesting for us actually is the first two um, type of epitax structures of epitax device and substrate that we've seen in this slide. So the GAN on silicon and the GAN on sapphire. Uh, even if uh, the sapphire is uh, a bit more expensive, the substrate, than in silicon, uh, the fact that <laughs> we have less mismatch allows us to have a shorter and a, a, a thinner uh, epitaxy and so um, a bit more uh, cheaper. Uh, why we focus on epitaxy? Because actually, so if you have a, uh, have a look to the cost of, uh, of a gun on silicon and hemp, um, we see that the epitaxy uh, impact has a big impact on the final cost of uh, of, uh, of the device. So the second uh, um, the second um, uh, challenge is the design itself of the die. So what I want to present here is uh, a comparison of uh, a cost structure of the of the wafer and the die. Um, according to uh, the design itself. So here I show you actually um, five, de five uh, die that can have uh, a PN gate design, and normally on, gate injection, thin PLGAN barrier, and normally off on sapphire. So here you see that uh, the epitaxy is still uh, the part that has the main impact on the final cost of, uh, of the device. And then you have the, the front side, back side, and in losses that are still uh, higher comparing to, to, silicon, to silicon devices. Um, so uh, according to, to your, uh, your need, you can choose uh, one or other devices. Um, so you need to, hold it to have a trend between the performances uh, and, and the cost itself. Of, uh, of the die. The third challenge was uh, is the packaging. So actually, uh, in the integration, we can find uh, three types of uh, integration of devices. Um, we can have uh, the option to have a discrete so package, uh, discrete device, and the external driver. That means that the integrator should choose uh, his discrete and then his external driver to, to implement in a solution. Um, the second option, so that means actually two um, devices in their design. The second option is the multi-chip integration. So having in the same packaging uh, the uh, GAN uh, device with the, the driver. This is proposed by Texas and Power Integration. And the third option is the monolithic integration. What we call monolithic is to have the, the component and the IC on the same surface of, uh, of a die. And then, obviously, these die are, are packaged or their die. So these solutions are proposed by Navitas and, uh, and the EPC. Um, what's, so in terms of packaging, so these three solutions can be packaged in the in different way uh, again up to now there is no one standard solution we can have uh, with so standard GO220 packaging up to uh, wafer level packaging from uh, from EPC um, the choice of uh, of packaging uh, really depends on uh, on the application um, and considering that uh, uh, linked between the uh, GAN uh, die manufacturer or designer uh, and the integrator is really strong, up to now um, every um, designer works with integration to choose the best solution in, uh, in terms of packaging. Elena, we cannot hear you anymore. Are you there? OK, 
Okay, sorry, we have a small technical problem. We'll be back in one minute. Sorry, we had a phone problem. Elena will be back in a few minutes. Hello. So I'm sorry, actually, the line just fell down. So I will continue my presentation. I'm, I'm really sorry about this technical problem. So what I was I'm saying is that uh, the packaging also has uh, an impact on the on the final cost uh, of the device. Here in this slide, you see uh, an analysis of uh, this impact. The first um, and the first three uh, devices that I show here, you have uh, a, um, an answered mode uh, device packaged in uh, mainly standard. Let's call it standard packaging. Actually, the first one is not really standard. standard. It's a PC embedded device um, from GAN systems. And then you have the two solution uh, with, um, with uh, standard packaging and, and single die without actual driver. The fourth option uh, is the cascode mode. So in that case, uh, we have to consider the integration of, uh, um, of a MOSFET uh, uh, inside the, the packaging. And then we have the three last um, design that are uh, devices with uh, integrated driver that can be um, in the same package, so die external, but in the same package, or on the same monolithic, monolithic solution. So here you see that uh, usually the die with integrated dri driver are a bit more expensive than the component uh, without, uh, uh, without driver. Uh, but again, this is a choice um, that has to be made in terms of what they want by, by the integrator. Um, so if we come back and, uh, to the actual devices that we have found uh, on the market, so commercial devices, in particular the fast uh, wall chargers, uh, we have seen uh, that now we have two main uh, trends. Uh, we have um, a lot of players that use uh, Navitas device and uh, a lot of players that use power integration uh, devices. So there is a battle between these two uh, DAI, um, GAN DAI provider uh, to integrate their solution uh, in the fast wall chargers. And if we have a look about the uh, link between the power uh, of the mm, charger and the volume of charger uh, itself, we see that uh, up to 50 watt, um, the, the, the gun solution already gives some advantages in terms of, uh, of volume of, uh, of the charger, so implementation of the die inside the, inside the packaging. Above 50, 50 watt, we have uh, only uh, GAN uh, solution. Uh, how they are integrated, the, this device? So first of all, I want to highlight the two uh, type of component that we found in, uh, in wall chargers, so power integration and Navitas. Um, I selected that these two uh, devices, power integration, um, actually both power integration and Navitas propose a different solution integrated in a wall charger, but uh, I choose this one. So the main difference uh, it's first of all the type of substrate. Um, Navitas proposed GAN on silicon, uh, while power integration proposed GAN or sapphire. Uh, and we have also uh, the design and, uh, and the integration. So uh, power integration is a cascode, Navitas is an ENF mode, integration is a multi chip and, and monolithic. Um, but actually, both are integrated in, uh, in wall chargers. 
and and up to now go, go, both they give uh, uh, good performances uh, in uh, in all the charges if we have a look uh, about uh, so the oppo etsy presented the the, the oppo so actually the first uh, um, um, charger uh, offer with uh, with the smartphone uh, what I want to highlight here actually is, is the solution, the changing of solution, the shifting of solution from silicon to GAN. So here we compare the Oppo RX17 that uh, has a power integration die, uh, sorry, a power integration component with uh, a silicon die, it's a lateral DMOS, and uh, the Oppo Reno Ace that proposes also a power integration component with, uh, with the GAN. But the solution has a, a package, multi-chip packaging, so the driver is integrated. But here we see that uh, changing from okay, 50 watts to 65 watts, so the, the GAN, uh, uh, so the, the component with GAN uh, gives more power. The die is uh, much more smaller than, uh, than silicon, uh, but because it's a cast code, they had to introduce the MOSFET in, inside, in, uh, inside the packaging. So that was my last slide for the technology and cost, uh, cost overview. Um, so I will give back the, the talk to, to David, and thank you to everybody. Thanks a lot, Elena, for your uh, in-depth presentation. So the last presentation will be made by Nicolas Baron, co-founder and CEO of Numade. It's about the uh, patent side of the GAN market. Nicolas, it's your turn. Yes, um, thank you, thank you, David, for the introduction, and hello, everybody. Uh, so um, at NOMED, we have uh, investigated the, the patent landscape related to GAN technology for uh, power electronics. Um, and uh, we, we have identified more than 9,000 patents published worldwide. And um, this patent relates to AP wafers, power devices, device integration, circuitry, and packaging um, for for all function, switch, converter, etc., and for all applications, uh, power supply, fast charging, EV, HEV. Um, the time evolution of patent publication shows two waves of patent, patent publications, and uh, since 2015, we have reached uh, a plateau. And, and the peak in 2017 um, results mainly from numerous uh, Chinese players. Um, and uh, this IP trend um, may reflect uh, technology maturity um, indeed, uh, a lot of patents now exist uh, in, in the world of value chain, from AP wafer and power devices to um, operating methods, device integration, and, and packaging. And on the other hand, um, market leaders with strong enforceable patents are present, and uh, also more and more newcomers um, are entering the, the IP landscape. Um, so th this bar graph shows the main patent assignees uh, according to the number of uh, their patent family related to power again. And you can see that um, all power electronics market players are present. And um, among them, the main patent assignee is Infineon, followed by Toshiba, Fuji Electrics, uh, Renesas, Sanken, Rom, Onsemi, Texas Instruments, and uh, Mitsubishi Electrics. And um, today, Panasonic, Fujitsu, Furukawa, Sumitomo, and Sharp have uh, an important IP portfolio because uh, they were pioneers in Indian power patents. And uh, also, among the GAN pure players, um, supplying commercial GAN power devices, uh, Transform is by far the main patent holder, ahead of uh, GAN system, EPC, Navitas, Exagan, or, uh, or this, this IC. 
Now, um, this picture represents the, the entrance period of main patent assignee in the power gain patent landscape and uh, their current patenting activity. So um, at the top, um, there are the IP players with decreasing or no longer filings of new new inventions or new priority patents the last years. Um, in the middle are the IP players showing steady or increasing patenting activity. Um, I mean, the players still uh, active in terms of uh, new invention. And uh, at the bottom right, uh, there are the new entrants in the patent landscape. Uh, so um, these new entrants have filed patents uh, uh, in uh, 2016 or, or, or after. Um, some pioneers in power gain patents, such as uh, Furikawa Electric, Sumitomo Electric, and Sharp, um, have decreased their patent uh, filing since 2015. And uh, contrary to Panasonic or Fujitsu, which slightly maintain their IP activity. Uh, also, we can note um, that Koreans or the missing players uh, in the current patent landscape, uh, because uh, Samsung Electronics, Samsung Electromechanics, uh, LG uh, Electronics, Inotech, and Seoul Semiconductor um, have strongly went down their IP activity after uh, patenting uh, period between 2010 and 2015. Um, um, meanwhile, um, a second wave of companies has entered the power gain patent landscape uh, between 2010 and 2015, and uh, a lot of them are still active in terms of patent filings. And currently, most of power electronics players are uh, intensifying their patenting activity, and especially uh, at, uh, Infineon, Toshiba, Sanken, Fuji Electric, Renesas, and Onsumi. And also, um, certain players are uh, enlarging the geographical coverage of their patent portfolio uh, by, by um, extending their priority patents, mainly in Europe and, uh, and China. And uh, this company uh, showing this IP strategy of, uh, of patent extension or, uh, for example, Infineon, Transform, EPC, Power Integration, Texas Entrainment, Intel, Navitas, Toshiba, and Renesas. And then, um, the last three years, more and more newcomers are entering the patent landscape uh, with first patent publication uh, related to Power Gain. And, um, as new entrants, um, there are, for example, GAN startups, uh, Navitas, Exagan, uh, Cambridge Electronics, uh, the Chinese GAN Power, and InnoScience. Um, there are also substrate providers, Chromis, Airwater, uh, or uh, Zinc Semiconductor. Uh, we have Power Management Supplier Dialog, and also uh, some foundries, uh, such as uh, founder on microelectronics, the Chinese, Sinopower, iWafer, Singui, and uh, um, New Button. And also, um, we recently observed the first power gain patent uh, filed by Nissan, uh, Renault, uh, Ela, Midea, and uh, Velodyne, Mida. Um, this graph represents the, what we call IP leadership of main patent assignee. Uh, so the vertical axis represents the number of granted patents, and the horizontal uh, axis represents the number of uh, pending patent applications. Um, so in, in just a few years, uh, Infineon and Transform have uh, reached the strongest IP positions in the power gain patent landscape. 
And, and today, this offers them the capability to limit the activity uh, of, of competitors. Um, in Finland, definitely has the, the strongest IP portfolio, thanks to the acquisition of international rectifier, but also thanks to numerous uh, enforceable patents, a lot of pending patent applications, and, uh, and fundamental patents covering all the value chain from AP wafers and power devices to uh, uh, operating methods, circuit, and packaging. And we think that uh, Infineon will likely maintain its IP leadership for a long time. And Transform um, has become a, a, a major force uh, in, in the power gun patent landscape. And um, it is currently the, the main IP challenger in power gun. Uh, transform uh, all the, uh, a broad patent portfolio comprising uh, fundamental patents in all the value chain, um, um, ranging from AP wafers, uh, power devices, uh, circuits, and packaging. And the company owns numerous enforceable patents, um, many in the US. Uh, but um, Transform slowed down its IP activities the last three years. Uh, in terms of new uh, new invention, but uh, it continues to uh, extend its priority patents uh, with uh, a particular interest for the for China and Taiwan. And, and also, um, um, Furuta One and Panasonic, uh, which have a, a good IP position, have have um, already leveraged their good IP position uh, by uh, licensing their patent to uh, Transform and, uh, and, and Finia. Um, and um, other players which have uh, reinforced their IP position the last years are, uh, for example, Toshiba, Intel, uh, Renesas, EPC, Power Integration, Ansumi, Toyota, um, Texas Instruments, Sanken, TSMC, and Toyota Gose. And now, if we have a look at uh, the Gallon Silicon and Gallon Sapphire technologies for, for core application, um, concerning the Gallon Silicon technology, only 10% of power GAN patents explicitly mentioned the silicon as a preferred uh, substrate. Um, so the, the gallon silicon patent landscape is character, characterized by the, the presence of uh, numerous GAN pure player, um, such as Transform, EPC, GAN System, Navitas, Exagan, this IC, Cambridge Electronics. Um, and currently, the most active players uh, in terms of patent filings that uh, uh, that clearly mention uh, the Gallon Silicon technology are uh, Infineon, Intel, Toshiba, and Texas Instruments. Uh, regarding new entrants in the power gun patents uh, for Gallon Silicon technology, um, China has made an, an impressive move into, into this landscape with new, numerous new entrants since uh, 2017. Uh, mainly, uh, we can mention the uh, founder of microelectronics IC and InnoScience. And other noticeable new entrants are Renault, Airwater, um, um, MMOS Semiconductor, Delta Electronics, uh, Bichet, and uh, Epistar. And uh, the last year, we, we observed a, a growing patenting activity for uh, power GAN system and chip solution in particular with the uh, patent uh, of uh, Infineon, Intel, and uh, Navitas. Uh, concerning vertical power devices, um, yes, several GAN players hold patents on vertical power devices using GAN on silicon technology. And uh, for example, uh, Fuji Electric, Vichy, uh, Renesas, ST Microelectronics, and Renault uh, develop such IP. And also uh, for power IC, um, some players 
uh, such as Intel, IBM, TSMC, etc., um, develop IP related to GAN on SOI substrate. Now, uh, regarding the GAN on silicon, uh, sorry, uh, the GAN on sapphire for poor electronics, um, we have identified more than 80 inventions related to GAN on sapphire technology for poor application. And poor integration is the best known player, but uh, only two of its patents explicitly mention the sapphire as substrate. And numerous other players have also developed IP related to Canon Sapphire Pro devices. Um, most of patent applicants justify the use of Sapphire substrate to um, reduce the manufacturing costs of the chip, uh, for example, with PowerDeck, and also to leverage their um, epitaxial know-how, uh, like Seoul Semiconductor. So among the IP players um, having patents on Galant Sapphire for, for, for electronics, uh, there is PowerDeck with patents on GAN polarized uh, superjunction transistor and fast charging system. Um, there is Seoul Semiconductor with patents related to epitaxial lateral overgrowth, shorted diodes, normally off uh, transistor and vertical transistor. Uh, there is also uh, HRL laboratories with patents on monolithically integrated power converter using the sapphire substrate. And uh, also we have uh, Fujitsu and Alpha and Omega uh, with patents in, in which the sapphire substrate is removed after the formation of the stack uh, in order to solve the problem of the weak thermal conductivity of the sapphire. And finally, we have also um, the Arizona State University, which recently developed a patent on high voltage aluminum nitride by Chotky Joy on, on Sapphire. And uh, just, uh, I, will, I will close my presentation with uh, this map of uh, a very important uh, player and unavoidable IP players for. Uh, for all tools involved in Proragon. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Nicolas. So we will now end the webcast with the uh, Q&A session. We will answer um, a few questions as uh, we are running out of time. So the first question is uh, for your development and SG. How do you see the development of the GAN Power business supply chain in the next years? Uh, thank you for the question. I can say that um, as of today, so we are seeing uh, several, um, let's say, developments, several business models in the GAN power business. Um, business. So the first one is, as I have uh, mentioned, and as Nicola and uh, Elena have also shown, it's from the innovative startup companies um, who are using the foundries. And in the last years, we have seen the uh, arrival of new um, gun power and uh, new um, foundry, sorry, uh, fabulous players such as uh, gun power, Tech or Wise Integration. And I think it will also continue to, to, to increase because there is still a lot of technological um, um, developments um, are possible. And in the foundry business, we also see uh, new foundries such as iGAN or Sanan IC or InnoScience from China. So this will also help um, these um, actors to, to ramp up quickly. And the second business model that we are seeing is also the power model and a discrete um, power device manufacturer. So it would be like Infineon, ST Microelectronics, or OnSemi. So we have seen uh, from the presentation of Nicola that Infineon is also strengthening the IP position on GAN. So basically these uh, players are getting ready on the, on the GAN product portfolio. And, but we can say that one of the business models that I'm seeing interesting uh, is the, the power management players, uh, the players such as power integrations or Texas Instruments. So we have seen in the, the case of power integrations, they have combined their know-how on the, the GAN hemp and also their um, let's say, strong background on the gate driver technology. 
and in a way this facilitated also the, the usage of these uh, devices by the end users. So it's uh, quite a clever way actually to, to get the market acceptance um, at their already known clients. And the fourth business model I would see would be if the Ganon Sapphire technology gets more mainstream, the many LED manufacturers uh, with the, the high volume capacity, uh, MOCVD capacity, can also benefit from this. So um, here, of course, it's important to note that the IP and the know-how of gun power devices is really, really important. So they would also need a long time to, to develop this. Thank you, Evgi. Uh, one question for uh, Elena. So do you see any trends in packaging integration? And do you think there will be a design win? Uh, thank you for the question. So actually now uh, the, the, the packaging market is really wide. We have different, uh, different solutions. Uh, what we have seen is that the in consumer application, so in the, the use of uh, the eye on, on smartphone, uh, the main trend is to integrate uh, the driver. So we can see that um, a trend can be the, the integration of driver in the same packaging. Uh, that's mainly to have, help the integrator to keep the same design of, uh, of charger. For uh, other applications, for low voltage uh, application, uh, the trend is more on simple devices, so mainly um, monolithic, uh, monolithic single single device uh, and wafer level packaging or uh, or embedded die. So um, the, I don't think now there is a one design win because there are other applications that can be. Um, where GAN can uh, can enter, so in that case, uh, for sure we will find the, we will see this other type of uh, of packaging. But for the two application that we have seen now, uh, I yeah, mainly mm, integrated the driver or completely um, single device uh, without uh, without particular packaging. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. And uh, we'll have a last question for uh, Nicolas from Numade. Yep. Uh, Nicolas, yep. do you see uh, within the uh, pat current patent activity a growing interest of the uh, HEV, EV and HEV application with, with GAN? Okay, um, so um, I would say yes. Um, there is a few poor GAN patents that uh, clearly mention automotive application. Um, today, uh, there are about uh, um, 100 patents we, which clearly mention electric vehicle as a main application. Um, and, and the number is, is increasing. And also, we, we have seen more and more automotive players uh, entering the power again patent landscape the last few years. Um, today, the main patent holders Targeting automotive application for for GAN technology are uh, Toyota, Denso, Bosch, Fujitsu. Uh, we have also Furukawa Electric, Transform, and, and, and Rom. And uh, m more recently, we have seen first power GAN patents filed by uh, um, other automotive players, such as. Uh, 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 Renault, Nissan, um, Hela, Magna, uh, China Motor. So um, I would say yes. Uh, in, in patents as well, we we observe a, a growing interest in in GAN technology for uh, for EV HEV application. Thank you very much, uh, Nicolas. So. Um, Feel free to first to share this uh, this uh, presentation to to colleagues, and if you still have some question af afterward the webcast, you have on on the presentation our contact details. Feel free to send us an email with uh, with some questions. So the webcast is now over. 
Let me remind you that to, tomorrow you will receive an email with the link to the recorded session and that uh, you can get more information about our reports on our website i-micronews.com and also our brand new offer on quarterly monitors uh, that we have on the Compound Semi but also uh, other thematics. Thank you very much everybody for joining us today and have a very, very good end of day. Goodbye.